Morning, cats. I reckon they're hungry. Yeah, they seem hungry. Well, here's the new arrival. Just got her here yesterday. Of course, that's a... That Massey Ferguson name there is a little out of place here. If you've watched the channel for any amount of time. If you're confused as to why that's out of place, let me show you. John Deere. 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 If you haven't noticed by now, it's a John Deere world around this farm. Just John Deere equipment everywhere. That's mostly because of dealer support. Of course, there's a lot of other equipment, but majority John Deere, I'd have to say. So it is weird to see something with a different name on it show up, but I've got a good reason for that. Oh, and while we're talking about John Deere, there's the snowmobiles. Neither of them run, of course. <laughs> That's why they're in here. But if you've been following any of my socials for a while, you'll know that this is my first personal piece of equipment. 8820 here, which, of course, John Deere again. Bought this this August and only ran about 80 acres through it. And back there's the Farms Combine, which is a 9750. A little bit of a difference there, I'd say. But yeah, that's, that's my... First personal piece of equipment was a combine. That is the first thing I purchased. So if you haven't exactly caught on, I'm not running on much of a budget here. I <laughs> don't exactly have a lot of money to work with. Just more of a hobby at this point than anything. But uh, yeah, that brings us back to the, the good old Massey here. So this is a Massey 1135, Massey Ferguson 1135, with this Dual 3600 loader. It is, as I've been told, and as you can kind of see, not a very attractive loader. It's definitely weird looking. It is the older 3600, if I'm not mistaken. I believe the newer ones have the cylinders underneath instead on the side, which, as you can see, the front cylinders aren't on. They're actually in the shop there. They had been rebuilt before I bought it and never put back on. So those need put back on. And technically they're supposed to go down there, I think. The guy who owned the tractor before me talked to me about it. And uh, as you can see, that's where the other cylinder broke off. But there's a spot for them up here. And it's just a weird, I don't, weird situation. All in all, it's just a weird loader. I bought it more for the tractor than the loader. So I'm not exactly super worried about all that. Um, these bale spikes are huge. I don't don't know if I'd be using them much, but uh, I do. I have found a bucket for this loader that I will be picking up here in the next few days, and I might use it for snow or something like that. This is an older model, as I've been told, because it does not have the eight bolt hubs as the six bolts, which is probably not great for a loader like that. So there's the first thing that needs some work, is that loader needs put back together to be able to function properly. That's the first thing. Um, another thing is this tire right here is not going to last much longer. As you can tell, it is not in very great shape at all. Back here, everything seems to be in good order. Not, I mean, there's obviously leaks, but it's a 50-year-old tractor. I, I'd be more surprised if it wasn't leaking. Now it is some sort of quick attach loader as you can see. It's supposed to be able to come off pretty easily. There's instructions for it there. Which I am going to have to take it off for the uh, biggest issue with this tractor. It needs a head gasket. Which is why the radiator cap up there is not currently on. It's because it does have compression in the cooling system. Unfortunately. Which... Shouldn't be a huge job. I will probably have to get the head resurfaced. We don't have a big enough mill to do that. So I will have to get that done. But for now, I mean, it runs really good. 
obviously I don't want to run it much with that issue in mind. As far as I can tell, it probably had air conditioning at one point, but it looks like that was removed. I believe. Again, I'm not super familiar with these. You know, John Deere farm and all. But, uh, should be simple enough. That, uh, with the help of the internet, I should be able to figure most of this stuff out. Oh, the cat's getting in my truck. They must be really hungry. They're looking for stuff back there. I say we fire it up. It's not very cold this morning. Probably around 40-ish. So we'll, we'll give her a go. Fire up. Another issue here is that uh, fuel disconnect is not connected to the wire anymore. So you have to come out here and do it manually. <laughs> now another thing with this tractor, as you can tell, is it needs interior work badly. Upholstery is falling apart. The floor mat's gone. There is the broken window. So it's, the interior is pretty nasty, to say the least. Pretty disgusting. But a uh, 50 year old tractor again. Can't really complain. These are the controls for the loader that go right up there to that control block. And uh, yeah, let's give her give her a go. See if she fires up. So it sounds really nice. It's a really nice sounding engine. It's obviously not a very uh, pretty tractor, but it's no sound guard, but it was a lot cheaper than one. So that's the Massey. New addition to the to my little farm, I guess. Um, needs some work. That was kind of known for the price point and the condition. I knew it would need some work. I was well aware of that. But, uh, yeah, I guess we'll see how it goes. I'm happy with what I paid for it. It's obviously went pretty really well. You can see, maybe the camera's not for that, but you can see the construction system, so I need to turn down to my gas meter. And if that don't work, well, Interior, head gasket, and loader. And I don't think that. I think. Can't, can't promise that for sure. It's 50 years old. It could have transmission to auto something. We'll just have to see. But I will be making videos on this as I start tearing into it. I think I'm going to try to pull that loader off today. Make it a lot easier to get in there on the engine. I don't need the loader until no snows next year so not snowing this year looks like it will but it's actually been raining so 
We'll probably get a big dump of snow in April. You know, in Wyoming weather. But yeah, we might find someone to park in the slaughter. Try to figure out how to get it off. After looking at the slaughter a little closer, I do think I am missing some uh, stands. Reading that. I do believe there's a stand that goes there or something to take the loader off. So I'm not exactly sure if I can actually get this loader off uh, without those. Unless I uh, fabricate something, which I don't really know what I'd be fabricating. So uh, I'm not exactly sure what to do. I'll probably leave the loader on for now. I might even uh, throw those cylinders on there since I don't really have anything else to do. I don't know. I don't think I can get that loader off without those stands, though. It does not sound like. So this cab's not exactly known for being quiet. See, loader works. Or at least the first function there. That, that hydraulic block there is actually pretty noisy. That's that hissing you're hearing right now. But I, I mean it, you know, it drives nice, so. Obviously there is a missing window there, so. I don't know how to adjust the seat or anything. You know, there's a missing panel there. It's it's a ranch tractor, so it doesn't exactly fit in on the farm here. I'll just take it for a little spin here. It does have the high-low power shift over here, which is a very smooth shift. spacious cab though. Got a lot of room. I had to go have a little fun with it. I don't like running it with the coolant issue, obviously, but that was the first time I've properly driven it since it was just driven off the trailer and <laughs> found a little bit of mud. But it's a new machine to the farm, obviously. I mean, I have no experience with Massey's whatsoever, so. The internet is going to be my best friend in this situation with this machine as I try to figure it out and turn it into hopefully a relatively reliable medium horsepower machine. It's a good running engine. Transmission's a little clunky when you're used to other ones. Uh, obviously the interior is... It could be better. But uh, all in all, it's a pretty good machine, I think, for what I paid for it. Hopefully we'll get that loader off here in the next few days and maybe start tearing into that engine. Try to get that head gasket fixed or replaced, I mean. Getting kind of feisty over there. Maybe then we'll have a good machine to start doing some other cosmetic and other non 
necessary things, I guess you could say, to it. But yeah, that is the new addition, my newest purchase. That will maybe run a grain cart alongside my 8820 next year, if I can find a grain cart. And some duels. I would want duels for it too. I don't have duels. This is everything I bought with it right here, except those tilt cylinders. Those are in the shop. So yeah, we'll see. We'll see what I do with it. Hopefully that head gasket will fix it. It's not like a cracked block or something. That would be a little sad. At that point, I'd probably just have to part her out. I don't exactly want to do that. I will be keeping the cab on. Find a new window for that. Uh, put some new upholstery in it. Floor mat. Stuff like that. I don't want to pull the cab. I know a lot of guys will probably say that I need to take that cab off, but I don't want to do that. I don't I don't mind this cab at all. It's kind of rattly, kind of noisy. I think if I threw some upholstery in there, it would be a lot better. So, uh, yeah, definitely interesting to see something that's not green on the farm. But, uh, yeah, it was just the opportunity that came up, and I couldn't pass on it. So here it is. We'll see. See where we go from there. There we go. They only like me when I feed them. <laughs> 